Hello, uh, like she said, my name is Sarah Tanner. I work with Miami-Dade County as Environmental Resource Project Supervisor. Um, and one of my many job duties is to coordinate the Artificial Reef Program. So I was gonna talk a little bit about the overview of our program and then um, we have artificial reefs located inshore in Biscayne Bay and we also have some offshore. So I'll give you a little background about the sites um, and some of the recent projects and then talk about some of the other project goals um, that we have. So this is where the artificial reefs are located. On the left, you'll see the inshore and northern artificial reef sites. And then on the south, we have, uh, or on the right, as the southern sites. And these are located um, mainly within the little sliver of the Keys National Marine Sanctuary that comes up. These are no longer active. Artificial reefs haven't been deployed here since the 90s, but we still have that information available on our web and everything. So starting with the inshore sites, we have 11 inshore sites. Six of these were established adjacent to land-based fishing areas. Um, and these are usually, these are just one-time permitted projects. Um, um, and they're not active anymore. So the material was just deployed, usually in conjunction with the creation of the pier. And then the other five we have are in old dredge areas. You can see it outlined there in white. Um, this was a, a, a dredge area that was, um, use that spoil material to create the Rickenbacker Causeway. And in the center, if the, I don't know how it shows up over there, but if it, um, there's some artificial reef material right in the center of it. Only three of these are active right now, or actively like permitted where we're adding additional materials, what I mean by active. Um, so in short, there's 45 individual reefs um, at these 11 sites. So inshore recently, we've deployed mainly surplus or demo concrete, um, like some of the other counties when there's a bridge that's being demolished or redone or a concrete pier being demolished and redone, we take that um, surplus concrete or demo concrete and put it into our artificial reef sites. Um, we also facilitate a lot of mitigation projects at our artificial reef sites. Um, two large recent ones have involved um, reef balls. So we have, I think, close to 4,000 reef balls in our inshore artificial reef sites now. So moving on to the offshore ones, we have 17 offshore artificial reef areas. Nine of these are inactive. Um, the Tenneco Tower one, um, which is on the Broward Dade line, um, two mitigation areas, were one where modules were placed directly on the reef due to damage to the reef, and one where there's um, modules next to a sewer outfall. Um, the South Beach site is also inactive. That's a, um, one that's close to shore right off South Beach. And then, like I mentioned before, the sites that are down south in the Biscay National Park and the Florida Keys uh, National Marine Sanctuary. So this popped up early, but uh, we have the eight active artificial reef sites that are either between or east of the reef tracks. So the one you see on the right is our Sunny Isles artificial reef site, which is located between the middle and outer reef. Um, and then we have some located in deeper waters east of the reef. So there's two, over 240 individual artificial reefs offshore in these 17 sites. Um, so offshore, mainly we do two types of projects recently, the connection artificial reefs um, and more, more, the memorial artificial reefs. Um, one of the largest memorial artificial reefs we do are eternal reefs. Um, these are located at our Golden Beach artificial reef site in the northern part of the county. To date, we've had 24 eternal reef deployments at this site um, since February of 06, and there's 178 um, memorial reef balls there. The other memorial reef that um, we do, have done is Neptune Memorial Reef. This one's located in the Key Biscayne Artificial Reef site. It's prefabricated concrete road units, arches, and columns. They first deployed back in October of 2007, and they're ramping up for um, phase two, which they're hoping to start in late March. Some of our connection reefs that we've done is the Anchorage Connection Reef, which um, those four blue dots connected some existing artificial reefs, um, the army tanks we have, a barge, and another vessel. So these blue dots are just uh, lime rock boulder piles. Um, and you can see in the one on the right, they're placed in close proximity to the barge. So snorkel or divers can easily navigate through all these wrecks. The other connection reef we've done is in Key Biscayne. Um, we've put out three connection reefs to date. Those are the yellow circles. Um, and this summer, likely, um, we're going to put out another connection reef, um, the green little asterisk. So, and that just went out to bid for today. Um, so, going on to some of the other projects and goals we have within our artificial reef program. One is the Bell Harbor Mitigation Monitoring. This is a mitigation site placed back in 1999, and it 
consists of a large boulder field uh, surrounded by um, prefabricated modules. Part of this mitigation project required 20 years of monitoring, and we just completed in the fall year 18, and I hope to have that report out in March. Um, we monitored this site before, a little bit before Irma, and then right after, and we came across a large ghost net tangled on one of our modules. Thankfully, it only trapped some channel crabs, um, unlike the other ghost net a few years ago on Tinico Towers that took a turtle. But um, with a lot of effort, we were able to pull this up. Another project we're working on is the Bug Light Shoal. Um, on the right, uh, right, you can see a picture of Bug Light. This was a local marker at the northern end of Biscayne National Park. The Coast Guard decommissioned it and removed it, much to the disappointment of the local fishers who used this as a bait fish spot. So we've been working with these local fishermen um, and FWC to find another area for an artificial reef that might mimic that purpose of a shallow bait fish spot. So we identified one just north of Biscayne National Park and the Biscayne Bay Aquatic Preserve boundaries. And like I said, we were working with the local fishermen. They have donated their um, surplus concrete or demo concrete to use at this site. Um, and we're in the permitting phase um, of that, just beginning the permitting phase. So um, we also continue to maintain and update the online locator, which is a GIS web-based interface for um, the public to go on and find coordinates for artificial reefs. Um, they can upload pictures. They can see pictures that we have saved on there. Um, and then we also continue to seek ways to fund and evaluate the biological assemblages on an artificial reef. Especially more recently, um, there's been a local coral disease outbreak the last few years. And we're anxious to kind of see what's going on in terms of our artificial reefs and the coral disease on the artificial reefs, because um, most research now is just happening on the natural reef. Um, so we'd like to find a funding or ways to evaluate that. And another one that popped up out of order is develop a management plan. This is always on my plate. It's always about to fall off. But we still hope to develop a management plan that will serve as a legacy document to give the history of our artificial reef sites as well as our goals and objectives moving forward for each individual site that we have. Um, so with that, I'll throw up our website again and the contact information and feel for questions if anybody has any.